Hey, hey, welcome River West kids. Great to see you. Um, actually, I've got some kind of really unfortunate news. I mean, Max Thunder, he, he didn't make it. And um, we're having to kind of roll without him. And last we heard, he was in Costa Rica doing a tree to tree zip line over an active volcano. Sounds like Max. And he was attacked by monkeys. And I mean, that's the last we heard. So, I mean, we're kind of fearing the worst. So maybe let's have a moment of silence for Max. Maybe we should be praying for him. Wait, wait, wait. Teacher Kathleen, hey, what's going on? Max, you're okay. I'm okay. Oh my well, yeah. Hey, I like that. I like that hug. Well, I mean, we were so worried about you. Well, yeah, I caught the tail end of that. I mean, it was a little bit morbid. Well, we didn't know what happened. Well, what I, happened I, after the monkeys came? Well, I called. Uh, hey, I'm late because I was at the orthodontist. Oh, hey, we're well, Hey, we're good. We're good. Here, okay. thanks well, for... Okay, carry, carry on. Yeah, I will. Nice, nice intro. Hey, I did make it. Here's the deal. So I was, I was zip... You're right about that part. I was ziplining tree to tree in Costa Rica over an active volcano and then I was attacked I was attacked by monkeys it was the worst monkey attack Costa Rica's had in the last 17 years you know what they did they ripped me out of my harness and there I was falling towards the volcano but I knew I had one option I pulled out my smartphone and I found the Amazon app hey I don't just have Amazon Prime, I have Optimus Prime. So I, I ordered a hang glider, all right? And it was delivered by a drone, all right? It's not next day delivery, it was like next minute delivery. I grabbed that hang glider, I assembled it quickly as I'm falling towards the volcano, and at the last second, whoosh, I missed it. That lava, haha, <laughs> it didn't get me. Hey, obviously, I live to tell the tale. So yeah, well, and then I went to the orthodontist. You know, I'm good, I'm good. And I'm so glad I'm here because, you know, we got, we got the game, the craft, and uh, a memory verse. And of course, we got teacher Kathleen worrying about me. I do like that. And we got the worship. Trust God, you can take him at his word and give him your heart. You, 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 you can trust God. It doesn't matter who you are. You can trust God. You don't have to be the fastest, strongest. You don't have to hold your breath the longest. You don't have to be a star. No, it doesn't matter who you are. And then repeat after me You can trust God, definitely You can trust God, definitely You, 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 you can trust God You can take Him at His word and give Him your heart You, 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 you can trust God It doesn't matter who you are You can trust strongest you don't have to hold your breath the longest you don't have to be a star no it doesn't matter who you are raise your hands and repeat after me you can trust god definitely you can trust god definitely you you you, you can trust god you can take him at his word and give him your heart you do you, you you can trust god doesn't matter who you are, you can trust God. Hey, River West kids! As always, it is so great to be with you. And as I often do, I'm going to start off with a question today. How many of you have been involved in a really big project that took many people? Like maybe you've had like a really big yard project at your house that you were involved in with your family, or maybe you've helped to prepare a really big meal with lots of people in the kitchen. Um, I was thinking this week about a project I was involved in when I was in high school with my youth group. Um, we took a mission trip to Guatemala 
And the purpose of the trip was to go down and help fix up and repair a church. And this is a church that our church in Texas had a relationship with for several years. And so we were really excited to go down to be able to help them. And there were several teams. There was like a construction team, a painting team, a team that was removing trash, and a team that was putting together furniture. And I was on the painting team. And you know, when we first got there, we were kind of overwhelmed. It was such a big project. There was so much to be done. And we thought, gosh, is this really gonna happen in a week? Um, but sure enough, we partnered with our friends down in Guatemala and we worked side by side and everyone pulling together, working together, doing their part, we got it all done in a week. Um, and I loved how it worked. It was just like when one group would finish what they had to do for that day, they would join another group and help them. Um, so everyone really pulled together. And at the end of the day, we would, we would play soccer out on the field. And at that night, we would tell each other our testimonies. And it was just a really beautiful week. Well, today's story is about a man named Nehemiah. And he answered the call that God put on his life to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And this was a massive project. And it's really exciting to see how the story unfolds and how um, it all got accomplished. All right, but before we jump in, let me give you a little bit of background. Last week, we left off with Jonah. And the story of Nehemiah actually takes place 350 years after Jonah. Now, this is a little confusing because the book of Nehemiah comes before the book of Jonah in um, the Bible. So you might be thinking, why is that? Well, books of the Old Testament, they are grouped together by topic. Um, and Nehemiah is grouped with a group of books that talks about Israel's history. All right, and then Jonah is grouped together with the minor prophets. So even though it's not in chronological order, they're grouped again according to topics. And, but back to where Nehemiah is, it happens after Jonah, 350 years. So many generations have come and gone um, in between these two stories. But Israel, they're still dealing with some of the same problems, all right? They turn their back against God, foreign countries come in, they, they rule over them, they overtake them, and many of the Israelites have to go and live in foreign places. Now, this was the case with Nehemiah. He had to live in a foreign land under a foreign king, but fortunately for Nehemiah, he found favor in the foreign king's eyes, and he was made to be his cupbearer. And you might remember that term from the story of Joseph. Um, a cupbearer is a really important title. Um, that person would be responsible for testing and tasting whatever goes into the king's cup so that they would make sure that it was safe for the king to drink. So this meant that the king really trusted Nehemiah and that um, Nehemiah had a lot of close contact with the king. Okay, one day, Nehemiah's brother comes to visit, and he's from Judah. So Nehemiah was really curious to ask his brother how the people of Jerusalem were still doing, because there were still some Israelites that lived there. And the report that Nehemiah's brother gave was not great, all right? And that's where we're going to pick up. This is Nehemiah chapter 1. Here's the report he gave. He says, Those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. Like this was really sad news. I mean, Jerusalem was basically in ruins, right? The walls had been broken down, destroyed, gates had been burned. And so Nehemiah, he's really troubled when he hears this news. And this is how he responds. He says, when I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and I prayed before the God of heaven. All right, this I think is an important place to mention that I think this demonstration of, of just Nehemiah's sadness, it reminds us that it's okay to be sad about things. There are gonna be hard things that happen in life that are gonna make us sad and it's okay to be sad. But what's really important and I think what sets believers apart is how what we do in that sadness, who we turn to in that sadness. And Nehemiah, he seeks out God. He is praying to God. He is looking to God to give him direction and give him perspective. Okay, well, the next scene is the, this foreign king. He notices that Nehemiah is really down, all right? And so this is what he says. He says, why does your face look so sad when you're not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of heart. 
So the king, he kind of picks up on the fact that Nehemiah is really down and troubled, all right? So Nehemiah, at this point, he feels like God is, is leading him to do something, but he's a little afraid to tell the king about it because he doesn't know how the king's going to respond, all right? So this is what it says. We're in chapter 2 right now. Um, this is verse 3. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, why should my face not look sad when the city where my fathers are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? All right, so he, he explains the situations like Jerusalem, it's really hurting. The walls are destroyed, the gates have been burned, it's not in good shape. And then he tells the king what God has laid on his heart to do. All right, he says, I answered the king, if it pleases the king and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city of Judah where my fathers are buried so that I can rebuild it. All right, so he just puts it out there. He's telling the king, look, I want to go back to Jerusalem and help rebuild it. And this was a big ask, right? That means that he would leave the service of the king to actually go and help a foreign country. Um, but he's probably really surprised by the king's response. The king is really supportive of the project. He writes letters uh, just indicating that he is in favor of this project. He sends timber with Nehemiah to help build. He sends men to help actually do the project. So the king is very supportive. And this would have been a big surprise to Nehemiah. And I think it makes me think of just how often God surprises us by the ways that he provides for us. Sometimes we face something really difficult and then God comes in and provides something in a really unexpected way that is encouraging. And I feel like that's probably what Nehemiah is experiencing in this moment. All right, so Nehemiah heads off. He's got the king's timber. He's got some men to help. He's got these letters of approval. He arrives in Jerusalem and he's pretty discouraged by what he finds. So he calls the people that had still lived there together. And this is what he says. This is the end of chapter 2, verse 17. Then I said to them, you see the trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and we will no longer be in disgrace. So he's getting the people motivated to do this project, right? And the people respond. They needed someone to come with vision and a plan and with confidence, and they really respond to him, and they start working, and they start rebuilding. Now, some enemy nations that are kind of neighboring Jerusalem, they start to take notice of this, and some come over, and they kind of start to taunt them. This is what they say. This is in chapter 4. They say, what are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring those stones back to life from those heaps of rubble burned as they are? I mean, don't these sound like, I don't know, elementary school bullies or something? I'm thinking, how old are these men? But that's what they're saying. They're like taunting them. All right, now this does not stop the, the Israelites. They keep building, they keep working together, and they're making progress. And soon these same enemies, they start getting a little worried. They're like, oh my gosh, they're actually pulling this thing off. All right, so this is what they say. It says, they heard that the repairs to Jerusalem's walls had gone ahead and that the gaps were being closed. They were very angry. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir trouble against it. All right, they don't like the fact that Jerusalem's being rebuilt. So they're plotting against them. They want to go and attack. So obviously, Nehemiah would get word of this. So this is how Nehemiah responds. This is verse 9. It says, But we prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. I love that response, right? He prayed and then he posted a guard. He prayed and he took action. I mean, this seems to be a pattern in Nehemiah's life. That's how our story started, right? He heard about the city being in ruins. He prayed to God, and then he took action by going to the king and asking permission to go and rebuild it. And now he's praying to God when there's a threat, and then he's posting a guard. He's taking action. And so often I think this is something we neglect to do, right? We pray about things, but then maybe we don't always take action. All right, and something that I've been praying about recently is just the, the friends that I have in my life that don't know the Lord, and I pray for them a lot, all right? But I'm also trying to take action and doing the things that I feel like God is leading me to do, like just being really intentional in my friendships with them, really reaching out in love, inviting them to church, bringing up Jesus in conversation. Right? It's, it's one thing that I pray for them, but it's another thing that I'm actually taking action and doing things that I feel like God is nudging me to do. So think about that. Like, What are you praying about right now? And do you feel like God's calling you to take some sort of action? 
Um, and if so, what are you doing about it? All right, back to our story. So because of this threat, Nehemiah wants to encourage the fellow Israelites, all right? And so this is what he says. This is in verse uh, 14. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. I love that. He's saying, he's saying, remember, I mean, God is with us and God is great and awesome. And we're in this together. We're fighting side by side. We're protecting our families and our homes. So I think Nehemiah is reminding them that the Lord is on their side and they've got each other. They're not alone. All right. Well, even though there were all these taunts and all these threats, the Israelites accomplished their project, all right, in, in really a short amount of time. This is what it says at the end of chapter 6. So the wall was completed um, in 52 days. That's just under two months. And when all of our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. I mean, isn't that beautiful? I mean, this whole project at the end, it brought praise to God. People recognized the power of God. And it all started with Nehemiah, right? With one man praying to God and then taking action, all right? And that leads me to our takeaways today. I've got three takeaways for you today. One, let's, we wanna be a people who praise. Let's be a people of prayer. Let's bring our concerns, our burdens to the Lord, and then let's respond by, by doing the things that we feel like he's nudging us to do, all right? And that's takeaway number two. Let's be a people of action, right? We want to be quick to take action. We don't want to just be a people that talks about our faith, right, or our trust in God. We want a people that are doing the things that God is calling us to do. So we want to be a people of prayer, a people of action, and thirdly, let's be people that work together, Right? We want to support one another and work alongside each other as we serve God and serve our community. Um, so I really love this story. I think it's got some really beautiful pieces to it. So um, let me close this in prayer, and then I'll, you'll see some questions that you can talk about as a family. Father God, I am so thankful um, for this story, and I'm thankful for the example that Nehemiah gives. And I do pray, Lord, that we will be people who are quick to pray, pray quick to bring our concerns to you, Lord, and that we're going to be a people that are quick to take action, Lord, that we will listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and take action. And then thirdly, Lord, I pray that we will be a people that work together well, that we can support one another and work side by side, just serving you in our community. Um, so Lord, again, I thank you that you're with us. I thank you that, Lord, that we can, we can always depend on your strength and your power. And I ask these things in your name. Amen. Teacher Nicole. Oh, hey, Mr. Ray. Okay, hey, I have, a, I have a game for you. Ooh, I love games. I'm going to sing our verse song, yes. which is John 13, 34, and 35, right? This is Jesus right. talking. Jesus was talking to I'm going to take out one of the words of the song. Okay. And we'll do the song, and you see if you can guess which word I took out. Okay. Okay, here we go. One another. One another. One another. Oh, no. One another, one another. Wow, that makes it really weird. Did you guys notice that he took out the word love? Mr. Greg, you can't take the word love out of the Bible. It's kind of all over the Bible, isn't it? It's everywhere. The whole Bible is God's love story to us. That's true, and he really only has two big commands for us, right? Right. Love him and love all y'all. So. so you can't take love out. All right, fine. Ha. Huh. Next Let's... time, just take out like one word. Like take out two and then we'll be confused. Take out the. The, yeah. <laughs>
All right, let's sing the whole thing then. Will you sing with us? Here we go. A new command I give to you. Love one another. Love one another. It is better that way. Oh, I know. Because I have loved you, so you must. Love one another. Love one another. All right, sing by this. By this. Everyone will know that you are my disciples. By this. Everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love, love, love one another, 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 love one another, love one another. you guys remember that love one another it's god's command to us hey riverwest kids as you know today we have been talking about nehemiah and how god worked through nehemiah to rebuild the walls of jerusalem such a cool story so it is clear what we should do for our game today i'm going to give you a building challenge get out those legos i know so many of you guys are amazing with legos and just build a really cool wall or tower, something to remind you of today's story. And you know, actually I was talking to Mr. Thunder, our friend Max this week, and I told him about the building challenge. And I said, hey, why don't you try to build a cool wall or tower and I'll build one and then we'll just compare ours. So let me see if, see if Max is here yet. Ah! Hey, hey, Teacher Kathleen! So good to see you, Max! Great to be here. I mean, great to be here. It's just always great to include you in these games. I love being included. Okay, well, did you have a chance to build your wall or your tower? Oh, I made a tower. Okay, awesome. Yeah, let me see yours first. Okay, well, I mean, mine's pretty simple. Let Wait, me... how long did it take you to make that? Well, I mean, not too long, but you know, it's just the classic, you know, Lego block wall. Okay. It's pretty solid. All right, a lot of, a lot of creativity. Good we colors. into that. All right, let me show you mine. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Check that out. That's kind of an unusual looking wall. It's a super tower. You like it? I do. I mean, it's colorful and fun, but it seems like maybe the enemies could get through it. Oh, no, no. This is a trap. All right, so this is a laser up here at the top, oh. right? It, it'll shoot the bad guys. All right, and then it could double. Oh, look like <laughs> Man, it's not super sturdy. Oh, Max, I'm sorry. <laughs> It doubles a spaceship, but not anymore. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, Max. It looks like I'm going to have to go console Max about his tower. But anyway, guys, have a great time building your tower today. See you next time. Hi, friends. Teacher Nicole here. I have had so much fun, really such a good time, crafting with you over the past few months. It has been a blast. And today, I don't really want to build something out of paper. I want to build something in your brain. Are you ready? Today we talked about Nehemiah and we talked about the wall and teacher Kathleen did such a good job. And she talked about how important it is to not only pray, but take action and to work together. You guys, we get to do that now too. And maybe we're not building a wall like this a wall around Jerusalem, maybe we are building, are you ready, a community of Christ for the world. Do you recognize hearing that? We say it a lot at church because that is our church's mission statement. We want to build a community of Christ for the world. So what does that mean for you? You're saying, I'm three or I'm 13 or I'm 10, I can't build a community. Sure you can, you guys. You are perfect to start building a community. So, how are we gonna build it? Great question. Let's start with, what is a community? It's a group of people. It can be a big group of people, it could be a small group of people. Do you think that your family is a community? I do. Do you think that the kids that you go to school with could be a part of your community? Yes. What about your soccer team? Your lacrosse team? Your swimming team? 
Yes, all a part of your community. What about the kids in your Sunday school class that you haven't seen for a while, but you remember them up here in your brain? You got it, part of your community. So how could you build that? Um, hmm, I think if you, I don't know, called them on the phone, texted them, emailed them, I don't know, maybe you send them a letter. Maybe you have your mom send them a video of you saying, hi, I miss you. Communicate with them, pray for them. Oh man. Now, so that's building a community of Christ. What's that mean? Well, I love Jesus. That's Christ. And I'm pretty sure you love Jesus, don't you? Um, so, a community of Christ followers. So, people who love the Lord and follow after the Lord, let's build a community of those people. So, my friends out there, I love you, I wanna build community with you, and I want you to build community with each other. For the world, wow, the world's a really big place. I'm sure you've been learning that in geography class. But, guess what? Our world can be kind of small too right now. Our world at home is just as important as the big world. So, start working on your home world. Start working on the way that you talk to your parents or your siblings, sometimes they make life hard for you, right? But you get to show them Christ's love in everything that you do and say, and definitely by praying for them. Please start praying for your family members. It's so important. It God just works through our prayers, I promise you. So, build a community of Christ for the world. Is part of your world school? Yes. Is part of your world our friends in Rwanda? Yes. Is part of your world our friends in Myanmar? Yes. And guess what? Also all the people you haven't even met yet. So you guys, I just want as our final project together for us to be thinking every day about how we can build a community of Christ for the world. Let's do it together. Sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes it's hard to talk to people. Oh, sometimes it's hard to love them, but we can do it because we have Jesus on our side. So we can conquer. So you guys, just like teacher Kathleen said, let's pray, let's take action, let's work together, okay? And together we're gonna build something so beautiful. We're gonna keep building the community of Christ for Jesus, for the world. And one day we'll all get to celebrate together in heaven Oh, it's gonna be amazing. But for now, I just want you to remind you, I love you. Most importantly, God loves you. And it has been a joy to be with you. Bye. Hey, River West families, thank you. Thank you for watching these videos. We have loved making them. And believe it or not, none of us had ever done anything like this quite before. But we have learned a lot. It's been a blessing to us. I hope it's been a blessing to you. And River West families, we are super excited to announce that we have some great in-person options for you coming on Sunday starting in March. And we're going to have an 11 a.m. service for kids infant through fifth grade right here at church that you'll be able to register for, as well as a 4 p.m. family service where families can sit and participate together. Hope to see you there. Our 4 p.m. service will be recorded every week for you guys to watch. It will be up on YouTube, so you can join us there too. And we would be remiss if we didn't thank Mr. Greg for all of the hard work that he has done over the last 11 months. He just jumped right in there and he directed us and he edited us and he made us look good. Oh, you guys, and he wrote songs and sang them. We are so thankful for you, Mr. Greg. And we just wanted to say thank you to Brenton, the man behind the camera, the man who has been taking care of all the lighting to make everyone look so good. Brenton, thank you for all your hard work. We hey, we love, love you! you! Can't wait to see you in person! The Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The Lord your God with all your 
your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. With all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart. With all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength, with all my. With 